How bad is fossil fuel actually? This is not a statement on climate change. Fossil fuel is a video game, one that seems to be a pretty blatant unreal asset flip. However, it has mixed reviews compared to the typical negative reviews, and I'm just way too curious of these games. So let's see. How bad is fossil fuel actually? Hey, Derek here. I was immediately captivated by the description of this game on Steam. Jurassic Park meets Half-Life is Fossil Fuel, a horror action shooter where the player must fight their way through Jurassic monsters and super soldiers in this open world adrenaline fueled cyberpunk experience. That's not a description, that's a jarbled mess of words. When I first booted up Fossil Fuel, I was surprised to find that the PC release is actually okay. I expected this game to be very buggy and not have any of the options that I wanted, but no, it actually has all of them including an FOV slider. The FOV by default is at 90, I put it to 100, and this didn't seem to break anything. However, there is one problem I noticed right away that drives me crazy. Okay, I'm in game. Oh God, can I turn off this blur? Oh, is this one of those games? Post-processing, let's turn that. I can't even turn it off, but. Oh, come on. Yeah, it is one of those games. I'm not sure why games keep doing this. Maybe that's just how Unreal works before you make some changes to it. I don't know. I don't make games. But for the love of God, please let me turn off blur. I hate motion blur. And in a similar sense, you also can't turn off bloom because that's also tied to post-processing. So yeah, if you want less blur and less bloom, you need to turn down post-processing, which doesn't turn it off all the way and also makes the game look worse. So that's unfortunate. Overall though, every other option is here and I really didn't expect it to be a decent PC release. It also never crashed on me and ran mostly fine, with one exception I'll get to later. As for the story, well, it's just shamelessly Jurassic Park. In 2025, the Sierra Research Institute made a major genetic breakthrough by cloning two extinct animals. This guy sounds like he's doing his best Steve Bloom impression. To bring back extinct dinosaurs. Right? Am, am I right? That just sounds like someone wants to sound like Steve Bloom. You're in a facility in Alaska, they're making dinosaurs, the dinosaurs get loose, everybody starts dying, you have to escape, there you go. It's not the first time we've seen the story, but also we can always use more dinosaurs, so I'm not really complaining. So the Jurassic Park influence is obvious, but what is less obvious is their Half-Life influence, at least till a bit later in the game. The gameplay is quite interesting because it doesn't exactly stay in one genre. The beginning of the game is almost more like the later Resident Evil games, but with dinosaurs. You aren't going to be that powerful, in fact, the first encounter you get with a dinosaur, you won't have any weapons to defend yourself with at all. And my first experience with that was not entirely positive. Uh-oh. Oh, well, I think it saw me. Yeah, it definitely saw me. Wow, it immediately kills you? Okay, cool, it's a one hit. So the worst way to do stealth. Dead. <laughs> wow, I would have not figured that out. I know, it's, it's the worst death screen I have ever seen. I can't skip the cutscenes either. Oh, that's annoying. If you keep dying to this, you're gonna have to watch that cutscene over and over again. Uh oh. Oh, I found out what to do. Welp, I'm just dead again. Or the game can break. Uh, cool. Getting a little intimate with a dinosaur. Oh, never mind, I'm dead. <laughs> Don't try to f dinosaurs, kids. Wait, I'm alive. Never mind, I broke it. Yeah, the raptors can make for some cheap deaths, but after that, things seem to go a lot smoother. Did I, did I die out of that? Cool, I died out of that, mostly. This is blatantly a callback to Jurassic Park, which is fine. To be honest, these environments don't actually look half bad, and the lighting is pretty decent. The dinosaurs are rigged well enough to not pull me out of the moment, aside from the cheap deaths. So, so far, better than I expected. Not amazing, but still better. The gameplay in the beginning here really does remind me more of, say, an old Silent Hill game or the newer Resident Evil games. They're almost more puzzle-oriented than first-person shooter. Once I got around this raptor, I found a PDA that said someone was carrying a gun when they weren't supposed to be. He'd get in trouble if the others found out, but with dinosaurs all around him, he didn't feel comfortable without carrying something on him. Right next to that PDA is a locked cabinet. So that's clearly where the gun is, but it's locked so you can't get in there. You'll have to sneak around this raptor and find bolt cutters to unlock this lock, grab the gun, and then you can shoot the raptor. It's clever, it's done well enough, and honestly this is way better than what I was expecting. Though this brings up one of the problems, 
These animations are not good. This pretty much applies to all of the weapons, all of the human enemies, and to a lesser extent, the creatures. So yeah, the beginning of this game is definitely more horror focused than I expected. And that does seem to be the part of the game that's been the most well received. To the point of where the dev made an entirely different game based entirely on horror where you don't get any weapons. This was largely inspired by Alien Isolation, and he even ported it to VR. Now that's not typically my thing, but I do see where he's going here. With a lot more testing, a lot more time, this actually could be quite good. Probably not, but it probably also won't be awful. This is where I want to point out that this dev clearly has a passion for this game and what's in the game. This game released back in August, and he's been updating it constantly. In fact, the most recent patch was just last month. And when you look at the contents in this game, the passion becomes even more clear. There is so much more detail about these dinosaurs than there ever needs to be. You constantly find PDAs describing what dinosaur is around. And I can get behind this because we do not have enough games with dinosaurs. That's likely why I enjoyed this game probably more than I should have. If it's this niche that is basically empty, if you want a dinosaur video game, your only choices are either a survival game boring. I'm sorry if you like Ark or something like that, that's just not for me. Or it's a hunting game, which is also not for me. I miss games like, say, Turok. Like, we need more dinosaurs in games. And it looks like we're going to be getting that soon because it's a game that's basically exactly what this game wants to be. Compound Fracture. It has an inventory game like this. It's slower paced. It's a little more action horror. This game is looking really good. Okay, back to fossil fuel. There is an inventory system in this game. And that's one of the things I struggled with because my God, I was running out of space instantly. It's also kind of just a nuisance to move things around. See, if you pick up two different ammo types, you will have to go into your inventory and combine them. And that's fine. However, if you pick up something else while your inventory is full, you can't stay on the screen and combine them. You have to exit out of that, go into your inventory, then combine them, then try to pick up the thing that you wanted. It's just sort of extra menu management. This is kind of a pain. Thankfully, there is a shop. You will find credits throughout the map, and then you randomly come across this robot vendor. Are you looking to purchase a Made in America good today? This is just the developer trying to talk like a robot. There is a bunch of things you can buy here, but most of it is stuff you will have plenty of just by exploring throughout these maps. So the only thing you ever want to buy is a backpack. You can buy numerous of these and they give you extra inventory space, so you better buy them. You only start with like eight slots and by the end I had like 20 or something, so it's well worth it. Inventory was still a pain, but much better. I also found that it's really easy to miss weapons in this game. There was apparently an M32 in this game. I missed it. I think there's only one of them in the whole game, but man, they really loved giving you grenades for it when I couldn't use it. I kept all those grenades in case I would find a grenade launcher later, but I never did. Now missing some weapons is understandable because they might be a secret weapon. When you first get out of this complex, you go further down into this sort of natural environment for the dinosaurs. You'll be in chest high grass with raptors in every direction. These guys kill you pretty quick and you don't have much health. They give you a shotgun just beforehand and this is actually a nice fun setup. Naturally, you'd want to get out of this area as quickly as possible, but I also wanted to explore. And that paid off because in the back, I found a semi-auto suppressed shotgun compared to the default pump action. It's just a straight upgrade. And if you don't look over there, you'll never get that. So missing some of them is understandable, but when you constantly find grenades for a weapon that you missed, Oh, it's, it's so I wanted that gun so bad and I kept all the ammo and I was taking up inventory space. Damn it, I just wanted the grenade launcher. I guess what I'm saying is to explore the environment. This game really wants you to do that. It's not a straightforward, completely linear path. In fact, the map design is pretty clever. If you open up the map, you'll see landmarks like that initial body that the raptor was eating so you know where you are. This map will eventually lead you down a ladder to an entirely different location, and that entirely different location will lead you up a ladder on the other side of the same map, so everything kind of loops in on itself. To be honest, this is map design that is somewhat better than I've seen in AAA games at times. At other times, it's a lot worse, but sometimes it's really good. It's kind of hit or miss. Now, up until this point, I wasn't really seeing the influence Half-Life was having on this game. I was having fun looking at all the dinosaurs, getting bit by a poisonous toad, but then the soldiers came in. Keep in mind, you're in a secret facility 500 feet underground, and now there are soldiers pouring in. Here's the Half-Life influence. It's also unfortunately kind of where the game starts getting a little worse. I fought worse AI, but these mostly just kind of blindly run at you. They were never really frustrating or overly difficult, and in fact, they do have different enemy types within the human soldiers, which is nice. You'll eventually end up fighting soldiers with shields. You'll end up fighting heavy duty soldiers with flamethrowers. They'll have turrets and mines set up. The soldiers will also fight against the dinosaurs and the different creatures, and at times you can even turn the creatures against them. Again, these set pieces are where you start to see Half-Life's influence, and they're 
they're not bad. They're also not good, but they're not bad. They never felt frustrating. That is till I got to one really big room, and the reason this was frustrating was not because of the enemies, but because holy hell, this room was not optimized. This was not my stream messing up. The frame rate actually was just that bad in this room. It was also not using my GPU much and totally maxing out every core of my CPU. So yeah, uh, you, you tried a little much here, but thankfully there's not a boss battle in this room or anything, so it's kind of a minor blemish on a game that mostly runs fine otherwise. Hell, even the tank section runs fine, and it's surprisingly competent? Yeah, you heard that right, there's a tank section in this game. I didn't expect that either. The ragdolls always made me laugh. Back to the bad frame rate room though. In this room is also where you can see another one of the devs' passions. Early to mid 2000s first person shooters. You see, your goal as the dinosaurs break out more and more and more soldiers pour in, is to get to the reactor. This guy is constantly telling you to overload the reactor to fix this huge problem. But when you get there, you have an option. You can either stabilize the reactor or overload it, which will give you one of two endings. And that's pretty neat. If you decide to overload the reactor, you'll end up getting a boss battle with a T-Rex. Now you had seen this T-Rex numerous times throughout the game. There's also plenty of other boss battles that just kind of pop up. None of them are particularly amazing. It's mostly just a slow walking, huge, interesting creature that you shoot a bunch until it eventually dies. So they definitely could have done more with the boss battles, but this T-Rex boss battle is the most disappointing of them all. This is the slowest T-Rex I have ever seen in my life. I do not see how anyone could die to this. Also, I hate the logic that big equals slow. One step is like 20 of yours. He would easily be able to catch up. So yeah, this boss battle sucks. Then you get on a train, you escape, and everything blows up. That's the end of the game. This is definitely the worst ending out of the two. If you decide to stabilize this reactor, the guy that was telling you to overload it gets suddenly pissed. The base is back online. Cool. The Calvary is on its way. You pitiful little piece of crap. You are always Finley's puppet. I'll deal with you soon enough. This is why I said you can see the devs other passion. This is blatantly copied from Doom 3. In Doom 3, if you decide not to send that message, man, that general gets pissed at you. Manual uplink established. Satellite connection established. Transmission terminated. Green, you have just violated a direct order. Get your ass back to that console and send that transmission. Green, this is your last chance to get... Aside from blatantly copying Jurassic Park, there was all these subtle nods I saw while I was playing through the game, but this one was the most on your nose. Soon enough, you'll fight against this guy as the final boss. He's in a giant mech, which is definitely more of a threat than the slowest T-Rex of all time. Once you destroy the mech, someone comes over the intercom, tells you you did good, and then you get to see this T-Rex eating something in the grass. So wait, the dinosaur survived, and this is definitely a way better ending than the other. So yeah, that's fossil fuel. How bad is it actually? Well, it's honestly not too bad. I mean, it's not a great game. The polish is kind of lacking. Animations are pretty terrible, but it was the first sort of asset flip I saw that I tried out that didn't make me hate life while I was playing it. I can genuinely pick out a lot of good moments in this game, which I can't say about a lot of other single dev sort of asset flip style games. I'm probably being nicer to this game than I should be, but it's obvious the dev cares about this game. He cares about the dinosaurs in the game. He cares about the game's mechanics. He cares about making a good game. It doesn't give me the same vibe that a lot of other asset flips do, where it feels like they just did some student project, chucked it on Steam and it was good enough. Is it worth the $20 they ask on Steam? Probably not. I would bump that price down to about 10, especially because the game is only three hours long. But like I said, there are things that are redeemable about it, and it's not all bad. I definitely see why it has mixed reviews now. And like I pointed out, the dev is constantly updating it, so it's not like he just shoved it to Steam, forgot about it, and left it as is. I assume the experience I had today was much better than the experience people had on launch. So I'll give this game a solid meh out of 10. And that should be everything I have to say about fossil fuel. Big thanks to people that join me over on Twitch while I stream this game. If you want to join me on Twitch and hang out in the future, you can check that link in the bottom right. If you want to follow me on Twitter, that is over there on the bottom left. And to everyone, thank you for watching.